Alabama State is 10 and 0 on the season. We took care of the Grambling Tigers, put them in the biggest spliff. Well, especially in the second half. And now we got one more game. But I did make a mistake in the last video. I said the game against Grambling State was the last home game of the season. It's actually the next game coming up. So we'll worry about that later. We're going to go up the Orangeburg, South Carolina in a very critical MEAC matchup. Whoever wins this game is in the driver's seat to win the MEAC. The South Carolina State Bulldogs are hosting the Norfolk State Spartans. Very critical matchup. Whoever wins this game is most likely winning the MEAC. So we're here, Orangeburg, South Carolina, and Nor Norfolk State really need this win. They've done really well in conference play, which has been terrible out of conference. And look at this right here, though. A pick six early in the first quarter. That is Cody Collins taking that thing back to the crib. The Norfolk State Spartans strike first, 68 yards out. James Tate's looking to redeem himself now, and he doesn't. This time, it's Travis Brown taking this ball back for another pick six. Back-to-back -back pick six is for the Spartans to start off this game. So here goes Chris Henshaw, the Spartan quarterback, who throws the interception himself. And on this game so far, we have three pick sixes. And here goes George Greenwood taking this one all the way back from 80 yards out. And the South Carolina State Bulldogs are right back in this game. Now South Carolina State are set to return this punt. Waiting for it is Chris Armstrong fitting it inside the 10. Look at this right here, though. He's taking it all the way up the left side, and he is gone. High stepping into the end zone like Dion. We are now tied at 14. Not one offensive touchdown has been scored in this game yet. James Tate, though, looking downfield for a guy. He makes that catch inside the 20-yard line. They're in the red zone. There goes the play fake. James Tate rolls out to the left. He looks for Chris Armstrong, his running back. That pass is caught. Now they're inside the 10-yard line. Third and goal situation at the three-yard line. The hand up to Chris Armstrong. He easily cruises into the end zone. Well, not at ease because he did dive in. But nevertheless, the Bulldogs have now scored 21 unanswered points, and they now have the lead. So now we go late fourth quarter. Look at this right here, another punt return. This time it's Mike Williams of Norfolk State. And now he goes up the left side. Going in the Bulldog territory. He takes it all the way back. Touchdown Spartans. And just like that, the game's tied at 21. And now we're going to overtime. What a crazy game this is. Not one offensive touchdown scored yet. James Tate looking to take matters into his own hands. Oh, look at that spin move right there. That was nasty. But eventually that drive will stall. They will have to set up for a field goal. The kick is up and the kick is good. Now the Bulldogs have to rely on their defense to get them this win. The offense couldn't get into the end zone. And now it's the Spartans trying to do something. Chris Henshaw. That goes to handoff. That looks like Williams. Oh, he's taken down by the fake smash. That's dangerous right there. Tack on 15 yards. That's a personal foul at that. And now the Spartans have good field position at the Bulldog 8. Henshaw pops it in the end zone. That's caught by Malik Willis. Touchdown, Norfolk State. They win. The Spartans win. The only offensive touchdown in this game becomes the game winner for the Norfolk State Spartans. And now Norfolk State at 5-6 and six are in the driver's seat to take the MEAC. They might not get to a bowl game because they do have a losing record. But they did win the MEAC, I think. So, with that being said, Luke Rivera is now an Alabama State Hornet. Poor potential, but we're not worried about that. He does have good discipline. We can develop him to become a better player with the way we've been developing linebackers throughout this series. So, we had a good time with his visit in Montgomery. He saw us beat Grambling State, and now he has decided he wants to be a part of the program. So let's look at the rest of the scores around the HBCU world. Fam, you just got destroyed by Georgia Tech. Texas Southern squeaked by Alabama A&M. Southern beat Bethune Cookman. Alcorn State beat Prairie View A&M. Prairie View still looking for that sixth win. And then Howard beat Jackson State in a swag MEAC challenge. At the MEAC, Hampton come up short against Hawaii. Morgan State come up short against San Diego State. Southern Miss beat Tennessee State. You saw Howard beat Jackson State. And then Florida 
didn't do much against Delaware. And then Tulsa beat North Carolina a and And you saw Norfolk State beat South Carolina State. So, we have some shakeup in the college football world. Texas Tech was number one, but they went down. Alabama State is still holding on to that number two spot. But they keep letting other teams leapfrog us. Nebraska is now the top team in the country. Wow. The Heisman watch looks like this. Ryan Thompson is still holding on to that number one spot. He's been doing that all season. Bet Nerick, the running back for Michigan, is still there. There goes Thomas, the quarterback for Texas Tech, followed by Halterman, the wide receiver for Texas Tech, and Johnson of Oklahoma. Nicholas Dottie, the halfback for Prairie View, wins Offensive Swat Player of the Week, with Tim Shelton with the rival winning Defensive Player of the Week. Albert Williams of North Carolina a and Cody Collins of Norfolk State win Offensive and Defensive MEAC Players of the Week. Now we go going to the standings. Texas Southern looks like they just have to beat their rival Prairie View A&M to get to Detroit. Prairie View can get to Detroit if they beat Texas Southern. We win the SWAC West again. This is like, what, the seventh straight year we've done this? Absolutely crazy what we're doing at Alabama State. We're looking to pile on some more national championships, though. Over at the MEAC, I think it stays like this for the rest of the year. Norfolk State with that win, which was really, really big are now in the driver's seat to win the MEAC despite them having a losing record. So as I said earlier, I thought the game against Grambling was the last home game of the season. It was not. Join us next time. This time it's the real home, last home game of the season. The real senior day. We are taking on the Arkansas Pine Bluff Golden Lions, a team that has only won one game all season, just as trash in the video game as they are in real life. No disrespect. Thank you for watching. Peace.